the gastrointestinal system, the GI system, there's actually two parts to the GI system. First is the alimentary tract, which that's the big long tube that starts at the mouth, the esophagus, stomach, small bowel, large bowel. Um, then there are the accessory organs, which is the liver, the biliary ducts, uh, the pancreas, and gallbladder. So this is demonstrating the two systems that together make up the GI system. So the alimentary tract is the big long tube that everything you swallow traverses this big long tube until it exits the body. Then there are the accessory organs. The liver makes bile, uh, the pancreas also makes digestive enzymes, the gallbladder stores bile, and then all of the biliary ducts. Here's another picture demonstrating the liver, um, the gallbladder, here you've got your right and left hepatic ducts, which make the common hepatic duct. You've got the cystic duct coming from the gallbladder. Those two form the common bile duct. It uh, meets up with the pancreatic duct, and then uh, the pancreatic enzymes and the bile all enter the duodenum, the small bowel, the small intestine. So that's how this is, shows how the two systems come together. All of the juices or enzymes from the accessory organs dump into the small bowel and uh, via the hepatopancreatic ampulla or ampulla of Vater. The percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram, that is a usual starting point, point for many liver related interventions. Um, so again, basically um, after the area is numbed, they just stick a needle directly into the liver and puncture one of the biliary ducts. And then from that point, there's many things that they can do. They can simply drain the bile from the liver at this point, or they can uh, inject contrast and do a cholangiogram, um, or they can put a wire down and feed it through and then place a stent. Um, so that percutaneous puncture, it all starts with that, and then once that is accomplished, then there's many different things they can do. This in particular is demonstrating, um, they've done the puncture, so here's the, the skinny needle that they have punctured the biliary system with. Um, they've injected contrast and they see that there's a pretty good stricture here. So, and remember the everything, when they inject contrast into the biliary system, it trickles down and, go, and dumps into the duodenum, and here you're seeing the C loop of the duodenum. So here it looks like the common bile duct is uh, stenosed, and so here they have uh, put a wire down um, on into the small bowel, and then through th via that wire, then they were able to inject contrast and also um, place a stent. And so now um, this common bile duct is open, it's patent, and they were to do that all through the percutaneous stick. Another thing that can be done percutaneously is um, extraction of uh, biliary stones. So stones can be uh, created and then those stones can cause obstruction anywhere along any of these biliary uh, ducts. Okay, so what I want to show you then is that again all of these percutaneous interventions a lot of times can be done a different way via the ERCP. The ERCP is the endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, and it's done with a scope that's placed down the throat, down the esophagus, through the stomach, and into the duodenum, and then here it's showing that the scope is in the duodenum, and then at this point they can take a catheter and cannulate that hepatopancreatic ampulla. And then from there, they can do all of those same types of interventions, such as, you know, place a stent, retrieve a stone, inject contrast, and do a cholangiogram, all those different things. So again, it's one of those things where if the ERCP fails for some reason, then that's when they would do a transhepatic or, yeah, a percutaneous stick. Or sometimes the two procedures are done in conjunction with one another. Um, now, this procedure also does use uh, floral for guidance, but it's uh, but the ERCP though is not usually done in an interventional lab. I mean, it can be, but a lot of times it just isn't. So, um, 
So again, just keep in mind that all of these percutaneous sticks um, is one uh, interventional uh, method, but just keep in mind that the ERCP is, is, can be done also. Here's a couple more um, interventional procedures. The gastrostomy tube or a gastrojejunostomy tube. And again, these are just percutaneous, you know, you know local anesthetic. Um, then the needle is um, punctured right through the skin into the stomach. And so, um, and then sometimes a balloon is inflated to keep it in place. And then now you have a feeding tube in place. Um, sometimes they're placed, um, again, for decompression, you know, for drainage. Um, but most of the time they are for nutritional supplement. Um, then the gastrojejunostomy, it's, this is, it's the exact same procedure. The difference is the catheter is threaded on further down into the jejunum. And that is done because sometimes with just the tube placed only in the stomach, the patient can suffer from reflux. And then also um, that could be that could cause aspiration and you know the contents could actually reflux and then the patient could aspirate into the lungs whereas if the catheter is placed further down in the system like say into the jejunum then the uh, chances of reflux are greatly diminished so same procedure just the length of the catheter is different the last procedure is an uh, abscess aspiration so first of all, we just need to know an abscess is a collection of pus, and so here's showing a, a, a superficial abscess. And so this, of course, um, is not done in the interventional lab, but just showing you this is a superficial abscess. So an, a, an abscess, though, below the surface is the same thing. It's a collection of pus, but it's down deeper. And so these, a lot of times, are done with CT guidance. Um, so again, the abscess is localized, and then a needle is placed down into the abscess, and then the uh, fluid is aspirated. A lot of times, the fluid is taken to lab for analysis, um, but also at the same time, they're just removing it simply because it needs to be removed. These can also be done with ultrasound guidance.